quadrant one, I, I want you to think of it. I'm just going to give you uh, some some ideas of what would fall into the product management activity. And then I'm going to get you to translate it. Like I said, I want you to evaluate uh, these ideas. I'm going to establish a vision of what it could be. And then I want you to articulate each quadrant for yourself based on your business context, whether it's your role in your current job or how your organization views it or both. Uh, for that matter, Pri it's champion. So it's championship. It's evangelism is part of the, what I think of as product management. Uh, I said it earlier, establish the vision for the product. Uh, this is the land of MVPs, minimal viable products, minimal viable releases, minimal, minimal viable everything. Uh, it's the land of road mapping, uh, high level roadmaps, uh, phase delivery, uh, communicating that to clients. Uh, it's the land, it's the quadrant of setting stakeholder expect, expectations and managing stakeholder expectations. Uh, this is internal and external stakeholders. Uh, it's the land of providing, if you're in that, if you're in an organization that, that wants it, of business cases and uh, ROI uh, charts and things like that. And measurement, how are you going to measure success? How are we going to measure, you know, sort of if we have... Uh, key objectives. How are we going to measure those objectives? If it's some sort of a web-based product, are we going to measure it with, you know, sort of client additions or, or usage statistics or something like that? Um, there's some tactical aspects to quadrant one, like supporting marketing and sales, uh, engaging customers, feedback, providing, getting feedback from co customers, consolidating it. I haven't thought about it. It's not on this slide, but I think of UX activity. If you're familiar with the, you know, UX activity, I could see that being a a quadrant one activity, of of involving the user interface and involving client feedback. Uh, so so if you're getting a feeling for it, product quadrant one is that product management. I, I largely think of this quadrant as being outwardly facing. Uh, that doesn't mean it ignores the team. There's an interaction and a collaboration but it's probably 80% of the quadrant one activity is outward, outward in the organization, outward to clients, outward to the marketplace, uh, outward to the sales team. If you're familiar uh, with the pragmatic marketing, a, a lot of people in agile, I think miss, you know, or underestimate product management, traditional product management or product marketing. And, and one chart I use with clients to really sensitize them to how big the job can be is this framework from for the pragmatic marketing folks. It's, it's their framework for all of the aspects, the strategy aspects and the execution aspects. I think the last time, please don't hold me to this, but I think there's like 42 boxes here where there's 40 boxes. And probably I, the last time I checked 10 or 12 were directly aligned with agile things, and the others were more product marketing activities that aren't typically thought of as strongly aligning with agile, but are necessary in deploying a product to the marketplace. What, I've, what I'm actually saying is in a lot of companies, I've seen just this quadrant consume 100% of the, the effort of a product owner. And what happens is they starve the other quadrants. So you need so this this can be an all-consuming quadrant, uh, which which actually destroys the integrity of the role if you allow it to do that, uh, which might indicate that the product owner needs help or something like that. So so what I, why I'm, I'm presenting this is just to sort of sensitize you to the scope of it. It's a serious. Just quadrant one could be a full-time job. Just just quadrant one uh, could. Is is critical to the success of the product, uh, but but not a lot of product owners sort of you know, in the real world look at it that way. So what I want you to do is I, I'm going to pause now for just maybe a minute, and I want you to think about the way I framed quadrant one, uh, and I want you now to think about your product owner role, personally, in a group, or in your company, or all of that. And I want you to start making a list of quadrant one activities for you. What does quadrant one look like for you? And then the second thing I want you to do is, is sort of put on your, your, you know, your guesstimate hat and figure out how much of your time 
uh, is spent on average? If it's a group, what is the average time to 10% uh, increments? So list your quadrant one activities in the real world for you. What kinds of stuff do you do in that quadrant? And then approximate, hey, I spend 30% of my time there. Or we should, you know, our group spends roughly 30 to 40% of our time there. So capture that. So I'll give you a minute to think about that. We still have a few, a little bit more time. I want to remind people to type questions. I'm not monitoring the chat. We're going to do a Q&A. So it's never too soon to start typing questions, and we'll probably go first come, first serve. So if you have questions, you can, you know, hold them to the end, but, you know, you can also throw them in there now. <laughs>